Hello, welcome. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum, and in this video, I would love to show you guys how I actually do a lot of my renders and um, yeah, how I get to basically as realistic as of an image as I can get to. So um, the project that I'm actually using to showcase this will be my Audemars Piguet kind of walk-alike idea that I had. So this is an actually 3D printed um, Audemars Piguet inspired design uh, for walk-alike. It is 30 centimeters wide and um yeah it takes about two days to print and everything so i'm actually currently also selling these for about 70 euros so if you're interested please hit me up in the comment section so um there's actually also like a, a working clock mechanism in there hopefully you can see like the actual mouse and everything are, in the, are moving uh not the mouse the actual the clock faces or the clock arms however you want to say it so um yeah so this is actually like the design that i want to uh, show you guys how I do a lot of my renders and everything around so um, I also already loaded up a scene um, But let's start off with something a little bit more simple and then I kind of work up to what I'm showing you guys right now so um, The first thing that I kind of wanted to show is that there is um, To the right hand side here is the file library and that is one of the most important things in here Because you will be able to select your environments the back plates as the backgrounds that you will use uh, your appearance, different models that you can imp incorporate, different lighting, different textures, all of that. So um, for me, I'm going to just start off with the plate and I'm going to keep it a little bit simple. So I'm going to use a studio plate um, and let's just put like this one out here. Yes. So um, then we can kind of go back to the clock and you can kind of see within the clock that there's a, a lot of light reflections in there. And that is because I used the back plate that was uh, similar to the actual picture that you saw. So um, I should now select the environment and then use like a, a, a single light source, I guess. Uh, instead of having like a light of objects in a room that kind of give reflections and stuff like that. So um, that is also another thing. So that is basically what you can control from right here. You also have a tab with appearances. And in appearances, you can go back and forth between... Uh, let's put carbon fiber on the bezel or something that you can uh, give different materials to different objects and do all of that so that is also something that you should definitely know where all of your appearances are and um, that is basically the first thing so that is your appearances your back plates your textures everything will be in this right tab file libraries so the second thing is cameras so with cameras, you can basically do it as if it is a regular DSLR and you can select all of your different ratios and filters, whatever you want to do with it, how you want to make the picture feel, you can get it done in here. I'm not uh, like a, f a photography expert or anything, so I don't really know as much as I should about all of these, but I kind of know enough to kind of get what I need out of it. So um, with this perspective and the focal length, I can basically try, I can stretch it out and make it look as if it is very close, but then we have a very wide angle lens on it, or as if it is very far away, but have a very close, um, you know, have a very long angle on the lens itself. So, um, that is basically the changes that you can make with the perspective and everything. Uh, and for this one, I kind of like this view right here. So, um, this is then your environment. So, this is basically how bright you want the light to be. And if you want it to have like a certain sharpness to it, if you want it to come from with what angle, whatever you want to change, you can do it in here. So, um, you can also change the brightness of the light to make it, you know, even darker or brighter, whatever kind of works for your setting, I guess. And um, also, again, this is like a bunch of, of, of photographic stuff that I don't really know too much about. And then this is your material library of everything that you're actually using within the scene that you have right here. So um, these are like most of the colors that you don't really see in here are uh, the ones that are actually from the file in SolarWorks. Because that is also how Visualize imports uh, files from SolarWorks into the software. It doesn't do it based upon the files. It doesn't do it based upon... Uh, like the individual components that you have in there it does it based upon the textures so that is why this works a little bit faster than SolarWorks would too because it doesn't really have the, uh, the same amount of count of um, materials and different things in there so it's, it's a little bit of a hard explanation but I'm trying to make it as clear as possible so um, in here what you can also see is your like uh, a little bit of like a, a, a file tree or something I would call it but this is what you can actually see like the components um, 
that you that you're loading into so everything that came from SolarWorks in a set and finished gold that would be then tapped upon the, that kind of that would then be the bezel i guess so the brush steel i think that was the the face plate there you go and brush bronze that was then the casing itself and the brush nickel those were the actual bulk patterns that were in there uh, and then like that you based upon every single texture there will be like a, a different file separation for it in there but that is also very important when uh, you're importing files from SolarWorks back into Visualize 3D that you actually also, uh, SolarWorks Visualize I should say, that you also give everything a different, or at, at least everything that you want to have different textures and different um, appearances, that you also give those different textures and appearances before you import it in here. So um, do that in SolarWorks preemptively because otherwise you have to go back and forth to kind of trying to change things and everything. It's, it's a lot of work. So um, yeah, that is also something that I would want to kind of give you guys. But um, for now, um, let's just see. I think this is like a platinum right here. Uh, I can go back to the materials. So yeah, this is a platinum right here. Um, and I can, I can do different stuff to it if I want to because I would want to have actually like a platinum watch with uh, a blue face i think this is um like a dope color combination for it with also the white dials and everything in there but i could do whatever i want to do with it so um let's see if i can come up with something dope again um and let's see we got precious metals right here so i can put like different type of gold titanium platinum tongue even tongas i think this is cool though because it's a little bit of a darker texture so you can kind of get that but we can kind of still keep the platinum bezel underneath that um and let's see what else i don't know if a gold face would do the job i don't know i'm not too much of a fan to kind of combine the darker with the gold i guess um i have like a titanium but let's also try to get like a little bit more of a brushed effect in there and then instead of having these dials white, um, let's see what we can do with it. Uh, uh, let's see, maybe I can do like a glow in the dark type of thing with it. And this is like also another tab that you can have uh, the local, basically everything that you have downloaded within the software as, um, yeah, as your material basically. But then you can also have like a cloud in which you can from the internet download new textures and stuff. So. You can here see everything with a green check that it is already something that you have in your system but then you can also download multiple um you know multiple new textures that you might not have in there yet uh reflector i think that would be cool to have on the actual dials here i like that i like that and then what should we do with the dials with the actual arms of the clock keep them white i don't know this is this would be already like a cool watch to me to have on the wall let's just keep, put it at an angle so we can see all of the different materials that we're using in here yeah so once you have actually got all of your different render settings in there the materials and everything how you want it then this button is your best friend because you will then get the option of actually going through your render field and everything on how you want to save it everything so um Basically for me now, it kind of put the resolution at 6K, that is not necessary at all. So uh, I'm gonna select use backplate, uh, so it kind of gets the right, you know, the right, um, if it is 16 by nine or 21 by nine and everything that's just depending upon the size, but I don't need it to be in 4K, so I'm gonna just put it at 1920. So um, yeah, that is basically everything. Uh, and then, you can you have multiple options to kind of make animations and everything uh, to put it on like a turning clock or whatever you want to do but for now for me this is all i need to do and hopefully this will kind of start up pretty quickly but i've been having a little bit of problems with the render engine so we'll see where it ends up but um yeah this, this is basically the process of getting to the quality picture level renders that I have from SolarWorks directly in SolarWorks because I know a lot of people have been using Keyshot or Octane or different uh, exterior render engines that you could use and to put in here but for me this has been working pretty much um, the whole time so that is what I've been using.
uh, it is looking like the render started, but I think also with screen recording and everything, doing that at once doesn't really help because it kind of needs a lot from your computer. Um, also, while on the subject of computers, uh, I'm really looking forward to getting a new one. Mine is um, kind of running on its lead selects, I guess. And um, But I don't know if I'm going to buy a new computer. I think I'm just slowly going to uh, upgrade some components, get like a NVIDIA Quadro, you know, things like that. But I kind of need to wait a little bit. I'm not really in a financial position to kind of get all of that right now. So, um, yeah, I'm going to just piece by piece kind of upgrade it and also take you guys through it. Because I was also thinking, like, maybe it is cool to do, like, um, you know, I've like a regular computer case sitting right here. I'm working on a desktop. But um, I was thinking I could design that case myself and kind of put all of the components back in their original places and make like a cool case for it and 3D print all of it and put like cooling fans and everything in there. So I was kind of looking at different options to uh, do something like that for it and to have like a, a whole kill, a case built and 3D printed for it. Um, it says the render is complete, but I don't really see anything being done to it. So here we go. Uh, this is then the finished product, and I think it is kind of good to see the different in materials and textures and everything. Even though the signals kind of went wrong with the the signal indicators and everything, but even though you can kind of see the um, the titanium here, but also something that is wrong with it is that the the size of the actual um, brushing is way too small. So if I would increase that, you would kind of get to see a rougher effect on it. So that is something that we need to change. Of course, we need to change those uh, time indicators. But um, also with the bezel and the, the level below, which you kind of, you don't really see the titanium, uh, the, the actual platinum underneath it, because the light is only coming from the top. So I'm also going to change a little bit of the lighting environment. But um, that is kind of how you look at things that you want to come out more and that you want to showcase different so that is also why we should learn from our own mistakes, I guess. So um, the first thing that I want to do is change the lighting environment because that will change how we look at everything. So um, in a, below this tab, you can go to environments and I think I put it at big overhead right now, but um, let's try this softbox. So that is kind of, you, you don't really get a lot of that reflectiveness um, out of these components in the softbox, but you could also go high contrast uh yeah that's also something that is nice to showcase detail um there's just a bunch of different stuff that you can draw also mixtures of of different scenarios so uh i think that is what this is that you have like a softbox type of situation around everything but then with some highlight points in there um so that is that is also something that is nice um so let's let's put it at, at I like this one let's keep this one in there um and for the texture mapping for the actual titanium i'm gonna select the box and i'm gonna set it to a world scale so now you can see the actual um you know the, the brushing effect of in the middle so um that is something that is very much automark uh what i usually do on the bezel so i don't know maybe that is something that we should do on the bezel but for the bezel, I'm not going to put it on box. I'm going to put it on planner because in the Audemars Piguet, they always do it like going in one direction, something like that. Um, okay, so now we have that for the bezel. I kind of wanted to put something else on the interior of it. Uh, let's see what else would work. The precious metals. I kind of want these to be gold now. I don't know. Damn, that doesn't really work for it for me. Have like a turn style. And here you can even like select the scale how big you want the different dials of stuff to be. Uh, and I think I want it to be somewhere around here. Um, but I want to add some color to it though. Let's see, maybe if you just put some red or something in there. Uh, metallic paint, candy red, something like that. 
and then I would want like a, a gunmetal black type of black chrome uh, for the actual hands of the clock like a, a dark chrome something like that do there are are there like gemstones in here gems I thought it were uh diamond and can I then also change like the different I didn't want it to look like a ruby stone or something, something like that, but I, I don't want it to be this translucent. I have no clue what these do. There we go. Something like that. I like this a lot. But I think it needs to hint a little bit more towards that pink ruby kind of color. Something like that. Okay, um, now we have titanium, we have silver, we have different materials and textures in there. I think this is still the platinum bezel, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and we have like a gemstone type of that deal for the clock faces for the hours and everything so let's see what this render would look like so the gemstones aren't really working um they don't really appear to have like any type of color or anything in there so that is a little bit disappointing um let's see what we got for like anything else like a missile or something something that will give a little bit of a light reflection i guess fluorescent magneto i have no clue what it is but it sounds kind of cool though uh transparency color i don't want this to be transparent at all something like that but i want that that kind of a high pink you know, ruby stone type of color in there um you know what let's just make a metallic red i'm over this oh this is the phosphor this is actually like the the reflective blow in the dark type material um let's see how this comes out there we go that is the glow in the dark type of feel that also was something that i was aiming for the other one is the ruby stone that is still something that would look dope but this is also cool for sure and that is also what different metals will kind of give you and what you should learn about them is that like a, a titanium or steel will have a little bit of a warmer glow to it so it will have like a little bit of a, like a brownish glow in there and then like a silver and platinum will have like a more straight up like metal gray feel to it without any uh, any like warmth and anything so you can kind of and go from there on what you want to do with it and also different materials have different ways that uh, a brushed effect will look different upon them so titanium will kind of be very rough and kind of look as if it would feel rough to the touch and then other materials will just shine more once you like brush them or something so it is also like finding the balance between all of that to kind of see what your creation will end up looking like because in real life something might look gold like when i'm when I'm designing it, but um, yeah, it will kind of turn out looking like this once it's 3D printed. And also what will affect it is how thick you 3D print it, because you can kind of see that this plate here is um, it's looking kind of translucent because this face here is pretty thin 3D printed. But if I put my hand behind it, you can kind of see that the light isn't really going through it as much. But now we can kind of see like a light spot here. So different thicknesses and different materials will have different results on how you will kind of get to your final product so that is everything that you need to take into consideration with you know the making stuff and lighting and all of that like it will definitely play a big part in uh, how your results will end up looking like so um pro tip i guess so um yeah i'm really happy with how this turned out to be like it is uh, a good representation of everything that i kind of wanted to incorporate in the watch and hopefully one day i will actually be able to make it in metal instead of 
3D printing it in plastic. But on that note, what I do want to say is that um, these are available. You can uh, email me like or DM me on Instagram or something to get an inquiry on these. The one that you buy will be made with some way more beautiful plastic than this is. It is already on the way. I ordered it and I will be making a video on that one very soon. I think within like two days I will have that actually at the house and uh, I will 3D print out another one just like this one but then in like some good metal looking 3d printer plastic and everything so um hopefully that will come out way better but um that was my tutorial on how to use the render engines for everything that you're doing so uh if you have like a solidworks package then that software is called solidworks visualize and you'll be able to make beautiful renders that look like these from your products uh in a couple of minutes so thank you for watching please leave a like or subscribe to this youtube channel i think i need like another 80 subscribers or something and then i will be able to monetize these videos so that would really help out so again thank you guys for that and uh, i will be seeing you guys in future content my name is shaquille feldbaum i'm out